Hello and welcome to my channel on the hook crochet with Jeannie and let's find out what's on the hook today. Well this has been on the hook for a while but I thought I would wear it. It's my new sweater that I made from cotton on, on yarn by James Brett and it is a size 3 yarn so it's double knitting and I tried this pattern and I absolutely love it. It's a good fit it's not too tight. It's got plenty of ease. And I actually made this by a kind of a between a small medium. I think I added a couple stitches to the small just to be sure it didn't end up too tiny on me. But I will stand up and let you see it. It's about this long. About a little bit shorter than the end of my sleeve. And I did on this particular one, I got it sewn together before I did the green one. I have another one in progress as well and it is done in the green harmony james brett yarn and <clears throat> i'm not finished with it yet but it is a different look altogether so i really like the way this yarn looks when it's crocheted because the colorway is very it's it's very gradual um, it's not striped although there's a little bit of a striped look it's very gradual and blends together very beautifully. And this is a look at the fat in the at the yarn. It's so beautiful. <clears throat> I couldn't resist it. And it took about eight balls. But I got these for $2.99 on sale. So that's you know less than $25 for this sweater. It was quite beautiful. And I really like the way the pattern uh, fits me. This is the Bell Crop Sweater by Sweet Everly Bee, and I've put the link down in a couple of other videos, but I'll also put it in this one if you're interested in making it. Uh, it's made with a K hook, so it goes pretty fast. The front and the back are made exactly the same, and they're sewn here at, this, at these shoulders, and then the sleeves are added later, and they're made in a separate piece. Very easy to make. Not difficult at all. So it's really mostly for squares, four rectangles, and they're sewn together. But I think what matters with this sweater is the yarn that you use. I think you should use a nice DK yarn. This is a cotton and acrylic half and half um, yarn, so it should wash up very well, and I'll plan to wash it on delicate and probably just lay it down to dry. I doubt that I'll put it in the dryer because <laughs> uh, I'd like to have it around for a little while. What I would do with this too is, because it's chilly outside, I've got a turtleneck on under it. But in the summer, and I'm kind of cold natured, so in the spring and summer, I would probably wear this with a tank top underneath it. Because you can see through it a little bit. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see through it just a tiny bit. And I'm pretty modest, so I would probably wear it with a tank top underneath maybe in white or in black or even a, um, a beige color, you know, a skin color tank top underneath it. So it won't be too hot and because it's got plenty of cotton in it, it'll probably be nice and cool for spring and for summer especially. So I plan to wear this a lot and I really like it and I'm very pleased with the pattern. So um, I have already made it again in the green and I'll show you that in my very next video. I should be finished up with that. So I wanted to also talk to you about all the comments I've been getting and the subscriptions. I am so excited and I'm glad that you have found my channel a good fit for you. So thank you for subscribing. I think I have maybe 32 subscribers since last Friday. So, uh, and I just started. What I had was all these videos made and I was so anxious about uploading them. I didn't do it um, until I decided one day to just upload all of them. And I uploaded seven in one day, so you only get a notification about the most recent video, but you can go back and look at my other nine. This is my tenth video, so I have nine others that you can look at if you get bored or if you're just crocheting and you want to be entertained. Uh, you can see the progression from my craziness in the first video um, all the way till now when I feel a little bit more comfortable in front of the camera. So I hope that... Um, my videos are at least entertaining and may be useful to you in some way. Now, when I reach 100 subscribers, I plan to have a giveaway. And, of course, I'll talk about that later when I get closer. So, 
Um, it won't probably won't be yarn. It'll be something else that I have in mind. I I'm, I think I've already ordered it actually, and it should be here pretty soon. So as soon as I have a hundred subscribers, I'll be doing a, a a giveaway, and it'll be fun. So look forward to that. Um, all right. So my next subject is a work in progress, but not really a work in progress yet. I've been looking for a sweater pattern that is crocheted from top down and I don't know if you've ever heard of that but it's called top down crochet and knitting also uh, can be done in a top down fashion as well but and a lot of baby sweaters are done top down but I wanted to try it in a woman's sweater so I found this easy raglan style sweater it's called by Hook and Bean and it's um, I think I found it on Etsy I paid for this pattern but it looks like it might be really good. It's um, a little bit too long, so I would probably not make it quite that long. I like a little bit shorter sweater because I'm a, a short person, so I don't like to make really long things. But it's a top-down raglan sweater. So you start here at the top and you crochet in the round all the way around and probably right about here you would uh, leave a space for the sleeves and then you would come back later and do the sleeves. So I'm going to try this pattern and I found some yarn that I had ordered not too long ago, and I didn't really know why I wanted it. I just ordered it, and I have about a thousand yards of it, maybe 1,200 yards. So that should do it for this sweater pattern that I've picked out. And this is also a James Brett. I just love his yarns, uh, or their yarns. I think they're awesome. This is called Landscape. It's also in a double knitting size. It's a number three, and the colorway is L505. Which, what does that mean? Nothing. They, they don't name their colors, which I think is kind of a big deal. I like colors to be named, but they're not. This is 284 yards, and I have at least four of these, maybe five. So I think I've done very well with ordering enough to get by. Now this yarn, and I talked about this in my last video, has a halo. And if you look at a yarn ball in the store, you can see if there is a halo or not. And if you don't like that fuzzy look, when you crochet something, then don't buy it because it's going to be even fuzzier once you get it crocheted. The last video I talked about the cowl that I made was very fuzzy yarn, but that's what I was going for. This is just a shade but with a halo. I, I like the halo on this and I really like the colors. So once I get that started, I'll show you how it looks crocheted, but um, I'm excited and excited to start that. Now, the lady that designed this crochet pattern called for jeans yarn by Lion Brand, and I have some of that around. I had the khaki color in jeans, and this is a number four, but it really crochets up pretty small. It's more like a three. So I can see why she used the jeans yarn for this particular pattern, but this is a three, this James Brett, and this is a four jeans yarn, and they're really almost the same size. So I'm going to crochet them the same way and see if it comes out um, the same in this pattern. It should be. And I'll probably do a gauge swatch. I don't know if y'all know what that is, but that's where you make a 4x4, four four, or usually a 4x4 four four inch swatch using the, the, type of, the type of stitch that it calls for and the yarn size that you selected and the hook size and so you put all three of those together make a yarn swatch a gauge swatch and then you check it to be sure that it measures correctly and if it does then your pattern should work out fine if it doesn't you can adjust your hook size make another one and I know that's a lot to do and most people say I'm not doing that gauge swatch thing but it really does help because then you know exactly what you're going to get when you get finished and you're not going to end up with a sweater that's too small or you know doesn't meet the measurement requirements that you need uh, for you or the gift that you're giving so I'm going to try that and I'll Keep you apprised of what happens with that particular sweater pattern. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was, I know spring is coming up and Easter's coming up, and we're all thinking about beautiful warm weather and um, parties and things to do for Easter and egg hunts and all that. And when, uh, last year I actually did this, and I wanted to tell you about it. It is a pattern that I found for coasters, and I thought they were so cute. They're a really good size coaster, and they have ears on them. And so I made one. These, these were done in 
colors, and I thought they were really cute. They're just made out of cotton yarn, but I made one in a variegated cotton, and it turned out like this. It is so cute, and I'll probably make the other three or four or five or six um, before Easter. Hopefully, I can get that done, but I bought this cotton yarn on a spool, and it's this isn't exactly the same one. I've got the other one downstairs in my craft room, but this is more of a white color. But it's the same thing. I bought the cone, which is the size 4 Lily Cotton, and it's the sugar and cream brand. You know, everybody uses it. I was crazy. I bought a cone of it like I really need that. I, and I tried to make a sweater out of this long ago, and it was so stiff <laughs> that it didn't work. It's really better for household things like dishcloths, coasters, things like that. So I bought that to use, and I'll put a link to that down at the bottom if you don't know where to get it, you can order it, but you can usually get that at Walmart. The other kind of uh, thread that I have been using for things like this is peaches and cream, and that is also, um, it's made in America, which I kind of like that. I like things, and I get a lot of Turkish yarn, but uh, this is made in America. And it's a four ply, and it says it's the softest cotton in the world. I'm not sure about that, but you know, it's it's a nice one. The color is sea mist, and I thought that was a really nice color for Easter. It has your greens and blues and whites, and it's very sweet and easterly. So the other kind of thread or uh, other kind of yarn I would suggest for these coasters is the 24/7 cotton by Line Brand. This is a super nice yarn. It is a high quality yarn and it crochets up very nicely. So uh, this color in particular is, uh, I marked it on here, Acru, which goes with pretty much anything. If you're making gifts like dishcloths or washcloths or coasters or anything like that, this would go with pretty much anyone's decor. So uh, I like this color. I was going to make a sweater out of it and I just never did get around to it. I think I started it and I never finished it, which happens every now and then. But it didn't seem like the right kind of cotton for that, even though it's a really nice brand. Um, there's absolutely no halo on this. This is a very slick yarn and I really like it. But for something like for coasters or dishcloths, it'd be a little bit better, better choice. So anyway, that's all I have for today and join me next time to find out what's on the hook.